Today I'm going to be continuing the Nirvana reactions. Today I'm going to be doing their follow-up record to Nevermind, which I just reacted to. Go check that out if you haven't. Uh, this is In Utero, which came out, uh, what, three years after? Two years after Nevermind? A lot of comments on that Nevermind reaction were saying that this goes for a more raw and less polished sound. So I'm intrigued to hear this. Will that be at the expense of the actual songs? We'll see. If you want to see this reaction uncut, go join the Patreon. Link in the description down below to go join that. It's $4 a month. And uh, yeah, we're going to hop into it. The first track is Serve the Servants. There's some great aspects aspects to that track, but overall it doesn't feel as tight or just instantly likable as anything on Nevermind, in my opinion. Uh, like, the outro was pretty great, that guitar solo was definitely the highlight for me. Um, but like I said, everything just felt like there was kind of a more of a lack of precision, in a way, if that makes sense, in just the performance in general. Um, I do like the lyrics quite a bit. Uh, it seems to be kind of talking about his upbringing and maybe his dis distaste for his parents. Maybe they got divorced. There's some angst here, definitely, and it's reflected in the music. Um, but again, I just it wasn't as tight a performance as, like I said, anything on Nevermind, which obviously maybe that's what they're going for. But for that track, I feel like it just kind of made it feel less, less energetic, right? Scentless Apprentice. Okay, this is great. I like how this one is more fully leaning into that, that raw aesthetic. Mm. That visceral scream. Oh, this track is like blood curdling. Great. <laughs> oh, I love. Oh, the distortion on those vocals, too. It's so harsh. That was great. That was better than the first track because, like I said, it just leans into that aggression and that raw feel. It's blood-curdling, it's horrifying in a way, and it's just very harsh. Uh, Kurt's vocal performance on that is one of the best I've ever heard from him. Yeah, I like that riff quite a bit. I just love the, the overall feel of that track and aesthetic of that track yeah that was amazing lyrically i don't really know what's going on here based off a book okay um it seems like again maybe reflecting on his childhood and kind of distaste for that i mean that those were some themes in Nevermind for sure, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of those themes kind of carry over onto this record. But I'm not going to focus too much on those lyrics. We're going to move on to the next track. That one was great. Uh, let's go. Heart Shaped Box.
This uh, this chorus sounds familiar. Hey, way. This feels like something that could be on uh, Nevermind, definitely. Just kind of the songwriting and the guitar work. I like kind of drawing out that chorus there. Wow. Interesting guitar sound, too. It almost felt like doubled in a weird way. Chorused in a way. That was great. Like I said, felt like something that could be on their last record, the one before this. Never mind. Very catchy. It had that kind of catchy appeal. Uh, great chorus. Yeah, one of the tighter performances so far, so I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, we're going to keep moving on. Next track is Rape Me. Interesting, because there was that track on Nevermind that was kind of detailing a story of, again, that guy kidnapping that girl and then R-wording her. I don't really want to say that word, but... Uh, I just said it earlier, so I don't know. Next track, I guess, we'll just say. Rape me. Rape me, my friend. Rape me. Rape me. Again, I always love when I hear Kurt's kind of dry vocals. Nice contrast between that that bridge and then this verse. How stripped back this verse is. Oh, now his vocals are really, really kind of clear. Another decent track. Cool vocal mixing in that track. Starts off pretty dry and then it gets a little bit darker with kind of some subtle reverb. Um, and then at the end there it gets the vocals get really kind of present in the mix and clean. And I think they did that earlier where he went with a kind of more, a more raspy delivery. The vocals got a little bit more like clear sounding I guess. Uh, which is interesting because I can't remember that really happening on Nevermind all that much. What is this about? Um, is it about just like a an abusive relationship he was in? Maybe let's see. I wanted to make a strong statement in sort of in support of women and uh, against violence. Yeah, Polly, which was the track on uh, Nevermind, was actually an anti-rape song, which was pretty clear because it kind of just showed how grim and horrible that story was. Um, even though he it didn't explicitly say in that song that like he didn't explicitly state his views on it or anything in that song, it was just kind of. It was just there, that story. Let's see what else it says. The song concerns a guy rapes a girl, he ends up in jail. Okay, I see. So the favorite inside source line supports that this song could be about how the media had forcibly penetrated Cor Corbain's private life and further distorted his messages. Um, interesting kind of duality to this track and uh, double meaning there, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I like this one. I like this one quite a bit. We'll keep going. I think uh, definitely the... Instrumental performances, I'm not loving as much as on Nevermind, but I think I actually am liking the vocal performances a little bit more. Kurt sounds a little bit more uh, unfiltered and just a little bit more passionate on this album. So I'll give it that.
Oh. Drums are going off in this one. I really like this chorus, this melody. It's kind of like not what you would predict at all. I don't know. Oh, I hear that tambourine. It's a nice little touch. Oh. That little metallic texture that came in was sick. I miss the comfort in the inside. Great, great, great track. Drums on that one were killer. Uh, overall, the instrumental on that was probably one of my favorites on the album. Uh, some really cool textures, textures in there, like that tambourine, that kind of metallic thing that came in at one point. Um, yeah, that one was great. Again, I don't really know what's happening in the lyrics here, but uh, I, feel, I feel stupid right now. I don't know why. I just feel like I'm not catching like anything, but um, yeah, loved the sound of that one. We'll keep it going. Dumb, perfect. There you go. I'm feeling dumb, and the next track is dumb. Okay, this one's for me. This is my anthem. Mmm. Got a cello in there? Hey, very simple track lyrically, one that kind of hits for me on a first listen. Like I said, it's pretty repetitive lyrically, but I think that's kind of adds to the, the charm of the track. And uh, I like the overall idea of feeling dumb um, and just feeling happy at the same time. Like it just kind of expresses this this feeling of feeling simple, I guess, maybe is the best way to put it. But then oftentimes, like y you look at people that don't have much and people that maybe look simple on the outside and they can often be like the happiest people so yeah i like the lyrics of this track i like the instrumental quite a bit that cello in there was super sweet keep going next track very ape And this kind of carrying those themes forward from the last track, I feel like. The king of literature. This kind of has a, a punk attitude to it. Ooh! Oh! Wow. That's a great chorus riff. Oh, that's one of my favorites. I feel like that had some of the best guitar work on the album the riffs there were insane the chorus riff really unexpected but fantastic and uh again like i f i feel like it's kind of continuing lyrical themes from the past track just feeling kind of despondent and out of it uh, i take pride as the king of a literature if you ever need anything don't hesitate to ask someone else first yeah it's kind of got this punky feel to everything it's just like 
this feeling of just leave me alone almost in a way. One of the most tight performances. Again, really cool guitar sounds and uh, just a cool energy to that track in general. That was fantastic. Milk It is next. Oh, great crashes, you hear that? Oh, I love the brakes. That's amazing. Just leaves you anticipating that? I love how like thin those guitar sounds are. These little like, it's kind of eerie. Oh, those are, so good. I love how how dirty this feels. My shit is her milk. What? So this kind of references the cover too, definitely. Oh, fantastic track. I'm just, I'm a little bit confused by these lyrics. Let's see what Genius says. Uh, okay, so nothing about abortion, but doll steak test meat i thought that was maybe kind of referring to abortion in a way i don't know very kind of disgusting lyrics but purposefully and i think the overall disgusting vibe of it is uh really engaging and uh yeah i love the contrast between the heavy choruses and the kind of eerie plucky thin verses as well it, it really builds anticipation really well and suspense i guess is the right word uh those breaks were fantastic that really adds to the susp suspense as well um it, overall it just kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat and i think it's fantastic next track is penny royalty <laughs> Same. Great baseline. Nice halftime little breakdown. Interesting track. The lyrics seem to be just. Is it just talking about like <laughs> his sickness? Any royalty? I'm anemic royalty. Maybe it's just like, even though he's famous at this point, he's got, I'm assuming, all the money in the world. It still doesn't stop those things from happening to him, you know? It still doesn't stop those sicknesses, those issues i don't really get this leonard cohen line like i've heard the name leonard cohen but uh i don't really know what that's referring to okay so here's more reference to abortion i thought the track before was talking about that maybe it was because this apparently is talking about that distill the life that's inside of me penny royalty was used by pregnant uh, women to uh abort the unwanted parts of his soul okay so not child abortion but i see hmm, interesting like there's definitely themes tying in together here uh i feel like lyrically this album is uh pretty cohesive and it's it's tying itself together in a coherent way um 
I just feel very kind of out of it right now in terms of catching lyrics. Um, so I apologize, of course. That track wasn't my one of my favorites, to be honest. Uh, it wasn't bad or anything, just didn't really hit much for me. Next track is Radio Friendly Unit Shifter. Is that a dog growling? What is that? <laughs> oh, okay. Crazy feedback. Hmm. Nice flip on invasion of our privacy. Pri piracy. You know. See, I just don't love these tracks where Kurt is buried in the instrumental. Strange, strange track. So many, so much feedback. Just so much bleeps and bloops. Yeah, that was crazy. One of the the most strange instrumentally on this album. I feel like the build at the end there was a little bit anticlimactic. I felt like it was building towards something, and it just didn't really go anywhere after that. But um, overall, a pretty cool track. Yeah, we're gonna keep it moving on to Tourette's. Okay, this transitions well from that last track with that kind of radio feedback, guitar feedback aesthetic. Amazing. So good. Oh my goodness. I feel like both of these types of tracks on this album have been my favorite. I mean, Very Ape was similar to this. And kind of a, a short, in terms of the length, but hardcore, kind of punk feel to the track. Kurt goes insane vocally. And uh, I just feel like it's the most visceral of this album. And uh, I think it's the best when they just go kind of balls to the wall with the energy, you know? So Tourette's, Very Ape, those are some of my favorite uh, because they're short, they're sweet, provide, they pack a pretty, pretty big punch. Yeah. I think Kurt just sounds great going with those, those screamed vocals. He, uh, he really gets into it and he really delivers. Yeah. We'll keep going on to the last track. All apologies. Hmm. There's that cello again. Oh. Oh! This sounds great. The mix on this track is perfect.
Hmm. Strangely very similar to the last track. I know there's endless nameless on, never mind, so many comments in that comment section of that video. Oh, you missed a lot, bro. It wasn't on the vinyl, okay? The, the grooves, I literally watched the grooves run out, okay? There was no, it's a missing, tra it's a hidden track, okay? It wasn't on the vinyl. Sorry, I'm a bit salty about that because it's just like, whatever. Strangely similar to what I had as the last track on Nevermind, which was something in the way, in that it ends just with this ponderous statement. And this track in general just feels like a nice, it puts a nice bow tie on everything in this album. It's kind of just like, here I am, I guess. And just like portraying himself in this unapologetic, even though the track is called All Apologies, this kind of unfiltered light. So yeah, I think this wraps things up pretty nicely here. The mix on that track sounded fantastic. The guitars sounded so clean. Um, I loved the cello in there, again. Uh, overall, I feel like this album has a more kind of like eclectic mix of instruments, um, which is definitely one positive I can give it. Uh, it doesn't feel as like tightly produced, mixed, or performed as Nevermind, but like I said, I do like the vocal performances, I think, on this one a little bit more. So yeah, I don't think I enjoyed as much as Nevermind, but it definitely has some some interesting aspects that kind of stand out and make it feel different from that album. Um, lyrically, it feels like a kind of a continuation of a lot of the themes on Nevermind, which is a little bit disappointing like it kind of does feel like a like a part two like a sequel to that album lyrically more than anything yeah overall pretty solid here that's nirvana in utero yeah that's gonna do it those are my thoughts let me know your thoughts down below and uh leave a like subscribe go join the patreon and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out